Hello everyone, today on steps one to done, I'll show you how I've made these speaker cables, part of a series of videos that I'm doing on my custom hi-fi speakers. Thanks for joining. As far as the material list, first and foremost, of course, you will need the speaker wire itself. I chose 14 gauge pure copper stranded wire. This was due to the specs and requirements I was looking to get for my particular speakers, the impedance values of them, and the cable length that I'm going to be making. I'll leave some resources in the description that were really helpful for me to figure out which cable would work best, but this is also what I'll use for the crossover uh, wiring as needed, and so this should work for most of your speakers out there, but again, use the resources if this is not it, go with the one that works best for your case. In addition to the speaker wire, we will be using this expandable sleeving on the outside of it. That just makes it look a lot slicker. And you can choose different colors of both of these, but I just went with black. And then you'll need the speaker pants or Y cable splitters. This will just change the initial single sheath of black cable into the positive and negative red and black cables coming out to the banana plug terminators. This is the type of connector I need for my AV receiver and the type of port I'm putting on the back of my speakers, but of course you can change that as necessary. And then some simple black electrical tape which will help with the transition between the sheathing and the cable pants and keep that cable sheathing or the sleeving from fraying too bad. The tools that I used are as follows. The calipers useful for measuring internal and external dimensions of the different cable pieces to make sure that they fit together. If you use what I linked down in the description, then you know they're all going to fit. But if you're trying to match a piece that you already have, this would be useful. Otherwise, just a simple tape measure for measuring different cable pieces would suffice. We have a utility knife and a combination of wire strippers and cutters for cutting those cables. Uh, I needed to use a utility knife because the black cable is seven millimeters in diameter and I only can go up to six millimeters on this pair of wire strippers. So you'll see my process for that in a moment. And the scissors would be for the expandable sleeving, just a cut it to length there for the cable and simple screwdriver flathead for this model of banana plugs. Once you have your materials and tools, the first step would be measure the length that you need your cable to be and cut it to size. So in my case, this black cable sheath is seven millimeters and my wire strippers can only go up to six millimeters. So I make the initial cut with these utility knife blades. And as long as they're new and sharp, it can cut through the sheath and the cable fairly easily. Just be careful that you don't cut yourself. Next phase would be to cut the black sheath and remove it so that you can put it inside your cable paint. So the idea here is to expose the positive and negative cables so that you can have each one going through their individual leg on this cable pants. And then the banana plug would go at the end of that. So measure for your particular unit. If you aren't using uh, the products that I am, they might be a little different, but in my case, it's about three and a half inches. Um, what you want is just to expose those inside cables enough to have about half an inch to three quarters of an inch showing outside the bottom of these legs. So once you kind of measure or eyeball, you can go ahead and make your mark on the black sheath. And again, my cable uh, wire strippers don't work on a cable this large, but I found that if I just make a gentle incision all the way around the circumference of this cable sheath. Careful not to cut yourself or the inside wire. And 
I'll let you be the judge of which is more important to <laughs> protecting. Um, but just making that incision all the way around and then bending this back and forth a little bit, you get a beginning of separation and kind of the second layer of this black sheath starts to turn gray or white, that strained plastic kind of appearance. And just continue very carefully until you can bend and start seeing the inside wire. All right, so I'm seeing it on this side. I need to clean up this cut. I did not meet very well from going around this time. But once you do, you, and I'm not sure if you can see here, but you start seeing that black sheathing separate and you can see the wires on the side. And most of the time, it's even a little bit easier than this. But on camera, everything is twice as hard and takes twice as long. But there you go. So you have that black sheath able to be just pulled off now and you have the inside positive and negative cables you can put into your cable pants. I find it easiest to leave one wire straight and then bend the other one at about 30 degrees or so, put both of them inside the pants and wiggle back and forth, and then they usually just find their way out each leg. So again, the idea is to have enough out this side so that you can put it into a banana plug. Uh, at this point, we'll need to strip the cable, and then we can attach the banana plug on, and after that, you'd probably want to leave the other end undone, put the cable sheathing around, uh, and then terminate the other side. So, do what I'm doing to just one side, then put the expandable sleeve on, and then do this to the other end. And we'll show you that next step now with the banana plugs. These banana plugs are pretty nifty. When I was comparing them to other products, I liked that these would unscrew and pop over the nose of the banana plug. Uh, so it's quite a bit cleaner and easier to assemble and disassemble. And also these have two set screws, not just one. So they'll hold your cable better. And additionally, I just like the way they look and the textured kind of knurled pattern on this sleeve and the red and black indicators for positive and negative wires aren't so in your face as some others. These are pretty, pretty subtle and I just think they look really clean. So on to attaching them, you will unscrew the sleeve and then pop it over the banana plug. You'll want to loosen the set screws without letting them fall out onto the floor and getting lost. And that might be the hardest part of this whole job. Uh, if you have not done this before, you can look through the very opening here on the bottom uh, and just make sure that you have enough for the wire and that's really all you need. Um, yeah, with this project, it's my first time doing speaker cables and I have to say it's quite fun. Uh, not too intimidating, I think, after the research that I did and it's it's a blast being able to make these and then use them so let me know if you are in the same boat if this is your first time and what things you may have learned that that would be helpful for me and others so once you are ready just use your cable strippers i'm doing uh this automatic one but just follow the instructions for yours and you'll want to gently twist the strands, and then I find it to be comforting if I just gently twist this in the same direction as well so I know it's not going to um, un unravel or mess those strands up. And this cable pant that I bought is actually um, a pretty snug fit into the bottom of these banana plugs. So that was one measurement I did not really take into account, but these just happen to work really well together. It doesn't really come off um, once you put it on there. And with the set screws, of course, being the main hold, that's just an, an added bonus. 
So tighten up your set screws and make sure that you keep track of, uh, I would, I would, you know, finish one wire and then do the others so that you can be certain that you're putting the right collar or sleeve on. This is the red cable, so finish, do the red sleeve on it, and then go and do the black cable. And it's gonna be the same steps for that, so I won't make you watch it, but once you're done with that, we'll do the expandable sleeve. We are getting close to the end. You have at least one end finished and terminated. You could do this before even, but I like having one end finished so you have a nice delineated stopping point. Hopefully the second end you have not done yet so that it is a little easier to put on the expandable sleeving. You can do it even if you've terminated, just take off the banana plugs, slide it over the sleeve. It will fit, it's just a little harder. To use this sleeve, you'll notice that if you compress its length, it will expand in diameter. So to start can be a little tricky, but you'll just press it against the end here. If you can hold it open a little bit. And then once you start, it will kind of hug the cable. And I like to think of this like you're kind of trying to help a pet snake swallow a pill, which I've never had the experience of doing, but this is what it makes me think of. So you kind of go from the spool side towards the cable that you're making, and you'll see it's growing wider, and then pinch the end, like you're holding the snake's mouth shut, that's probably not very humane, and then stroke its neck down. <laughs> Uh, in my mind, that's just what I'm doing over and over again, and it works pretty well. So you can see we're almost at the end here on the other side. And once you are about there, just over the cable pants is where I like it, then you can take the electrical tape, uh, take your scissors, trim up the, the phrase, take your electrical tape, and kind of clean it up. And again, one of the hardest parts of this whole build, finding the very end of the tape. If you had some heat shrink tubing, which I don't, that could also be a good clean way to do this transition. But I really don't mind how this looks as long as I keep it tight and try to end it straight. Uh, and I, I could have trimmed the phrase off there a little bit more. I probably should have, but that is the transition there. Well, as you can see, trimming the frayed ends of the expandable sleeving does leave a little mess, but really a uh, simple job done. And with the electrical tape, the transition almost blends the texture of the sleeving into the texture of the cable pants, and I think that looks pretty slick. As you can see, we've terminated both ends, taped it up, so they are looking pretty and ready to use in our set of custom hi-fi speakers. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.